This podcast is brought to you by teespring.com slash lonely mans. <laughs> T-E-E spring.com slash lonely mans. We got hoodies, t-shirts, fanny packs. I think there's a pillow there. Yeah, we, don't they got like cell phone cases and mugs too? I, I think I put a mug up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this holiday, right? Yeah, get, what's a better gift than a lonely man's merch for somebody? That's the Maybe best gift November you can give. First them. is Christmas season. Get yeah, up and done. Halloween is over. It is time to get ready for Black Friday. Good for all the Fridays are coming. Christmas, lonely man merch is the only way to go this year. That's all I'm getting. Anybody? Teespring.com slash lonely man. Yo. All right, let's get let's get into the podcast. <laughs> we got some hoodies, right? We're rocking. We're gonna be rocking some lonely man's hoodies, right? I think we should have acquired the hoodies before we started advertising. I think that's what you're supposed to do. You get the merch, you show it off, people start asking about it, and then you're like, you set like a release date. We gotta do it like Supreme and Babe. That's all. Well, that's what we should have done, but it's already too late. We're already well, in it now. We're going to be showing off the merch next time. Post the link a week before we even purchased our hoodies. And now they're not coming for like a week. So uh, the next two podcasts, we might be rocking the hoodies. (laughs) One of the two. They're coming soon. But just trust that I will be I will be taking some some modeling shots just to let y'all know how fly we look in these hoodies, bro. Hell yeah. Come over. I got a ring light. I got a decent camera. Yeah. We're going to do that little jump pose where you pose in the air with this face. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about. It's like, yeah. And I'm rocking the Lonely Man's hoodies, baby. It's going to be fly. Uh, we should have bought a bunch of Lonely Man's merch, and then you could do like an 80s movie montage. You just keep walking through the door in like a different outfit. I was going to say like, we buy some. I was going to actually, do we have like tank tops and t-shirts? I think I could put a tank top up. I don't know why I didn't put a sleeveless shirt up for Ben Basanga. But that's that's kind of my thing. So, I mean, needless to say, before it's all said and done, I will be decked out in Lonely Man's merch t-shirts and tank tops i'm gonna be rocking it all so that's they got uh leggings we can put leggings up they got lonely man's leggings now yeah damn that's that's hot you know that's i'm gonna be listen any gift i get anybody this year is only gonna be lonely man's merch yeah your girl's gonna be decked out in the leggings yeah uh, baby doll tee bro all i need to do is get a girl and then i can deck her out in lonely man's gear dog hell yeah nine more days you get yourself a woman oh man nine is that what we're at uh, Isn't it seven more days? No, eight. Eight days. Today's day 32, right? That's right. You're correct. Yeah, today's day 32. So we got eight more days. So a week from tomorrow will be the last day. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I broke today. I bought a bunch of discount Halloween candy from CVS. Did you eat it? I went in hard on the Halloween <laughs> candy, dude. <laughs> Full disclosure. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> I got there's like three Twix left in the bag right now. The mini oh Twix. man, I was sitting here holding out like I'm gonna buy this bag of candy and then just stare at it for a week. But here I know that you, Jesse the monster, went in on all the bought, candy. If you bought that candy, just tear into it. You... No, nah, I was actually gonna go get it. I gotta go pick up. I bought a curtain for my room, yeah, and I didn't know that the curtains only like I thought it came in twos, you know, why wouldn't it come in two? The pictures, the pictures showed too, so I thought it came too, and then now I just got one panel. <laughs> <laughs> like who? So now I had to order a second panel separately. So I gotta go pick it up, and then uh, I'm gonna go buy some candy. But now that I know you broke, dog, I'm not gonna lie. Go like, in, go in. I can't break though. You know, I got to hold strong. I'm not going to break. All right. One of us does. The whole team can't fall apart here. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, if I break, I'm going to bust a nut. Like that's, <laughs> like, that's going to be my breaking. Fuck a Twix, dog. I'll bust that. Skeet, skeet, skeet. Oh. <laughs> That'll be my breaking. Like, I'm not going to break for a candy bar. But it's close, man. I hate. That's the thing. We've done so much dirt. Like, we've done too much dirt to turn back now, you know? Yeah. True. 31 days deep, 32 days deep. 32 days deep. I would be crushed if I broke 32 days deep. That's like, 
One time when I used to run track in high school, my favorite race to watch, I didn't run it, but it was 400 meters. That's one lap around the track, but you do hurdles, the 400 meter hurdles. Yeah. And it's a hard race because by the end of it, people are dying. And, and inevitably by the end of it, like someone would always fall down and trip. And I remember this one time, this dude was probably 10 feet from the finish line. Like he'd been winning the whole race and his legs just gave out. Like you just watched his legs just like do, 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 do. And the dude <laughs> yeah. fell and he's trying to get back up, bro. And <laughs> like four people passed him and he lost. <laughs> Didn't win anything. So that's how I would feel if I broke now. Like I'm 10 feet from the finish line. That's bro. how I was at the CVS. I was like, no, uh, I just grabbed a bunch of candy on my way. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I'm going to grab the candy and then hide it from myself. I'm that's, just... a, that's a bold strategy. Yeah, well, the thing is, I have my weed, all my weed paraphernalia hidden from myself. So I figure, fuck it, I'll just put it in the closet with that and yeah. then just wait a week. It's going to be a very long week, but your boy Ben Bo, we're going to make it. Hold it strong, baby. Yeah, I heard. Uh, still, uh, still meditating every day. I haven't broke on that yet. Nah, meditating every day, still writing every day. That's yeah. the thing. I almost broke on that this morning. I woke up and I was like, I don't have anything to plan for the day. Why do I even have to get out of bed? Yeah. But then I realized that's the trap because mm-hmm. then you, you don't do it today. And then tomorrow it's like, how oh, do I need to do it today if I already missed yesterday? I broke the streak, you know? Yeah. So then, but it's also at the same time, like you, you do this thing where the streak becomes more important than the actual thing you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the, the act of itself, it's almost like if I'm going to write every day or meditate, it's like, I'm not even meditating to get out of anything. I'm just meditating so I can say I meditated today. You know, which is kind of defeating the purpose. Like you're trying to do that because it puts you in the right mental state to start the day. So that's always what I'm trying to remember with all this is like to keep the main thing, the main thing, you know, the main thing isn't like, oh, I kept the street going. The main thing is like I am meditating because it puts me in the right frame of mind to do this in the day. Mm -hmm. So that's that was the thing. Oh, I was going to ask. So 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 word on the street is. Someone stole the Lonely Man's logo for their podcast. <laughs> Some I mean, we, got, we stole we stole the logo. Yeah, but we stole place. we stole it fair and square <laughs> from the founders, you know. So, <laughs> we said, "Hey, only fans." Yeah, the hairline's fucked up. We said, "Hey, only fans, we like your logo. We're gonna steal it." And then someone else is now saying, "Hey, Lonely Man's, we like your stolen logo. We're gonna steal that." Even even worse than a, a podcast that like played on the name OnlyFans like we did. I saw a site that's selling Lonely Man's t-shirts with uh but their logo doesn't look as good as ours. Wait, they're selling Lonely Man's t-shirts? Yeah, there's a clothing site that has like a quarantine edition and there's like Lonely Man's. Uh and they got like two other shirts. One is like the porn, the porn hub, like pages thing it's like page like 56 of 100 or something like that like you're like scrolling through like every page of Pornhub I see and then uh I forget what the other one is but yeah their lonely man's the the man's part of it doesn't look as good as ours of course not we're the original we got a lot of bootlegs you know if you're gonna if you're gonna prepare to be the first thief you know get prepared to be jacked by some other hoodlums Which is fine. I'm not sweating them, bro. We're already 30, what is it be? 32 episodes deep now? 31. 31. Yeah, we're in the game. Tell them to get 30 episodes deep and come see us. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's the who's the other one? What's her name though that, that did that? Karen Feehan. Oh yeah, hers are called. Oh man, I don't even know what hers is called. Only not Feehans. Tr- only Feehans. I'm not trying to get you. <laughs> only Feehans. I mean, maybe it's good. Has she dropped an episode yet? She's got one out. Yeah, reach she out. She did have to- a pop in OnlyFans account too. She was making like at least 10 G's a month off OnlyFans. And so she dropped. So let me get this straight. She dropped a 10 G a month OnlyFans account to make a free podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this I don't is know what I think about her. I think she's hilarious. Shout out Karen Feehan. Would love to be on Only Feehans. Would love to have you on Lonely Mans. Yeah, come check us out. But the maybe thing is, maybe you don't need that 10 
G's a month. I do. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> I, right. I wouldn't drop that operation. I was about to say, like, what made her drop that off? Apparently, the word on the street is it's a, the dude she was dating didn't like it, right? Doesn't like the fact that she's got a lonely, like, she's got an OnlyFans. Yeah. That's what she talked about it on Ari Shafir's podcast, but I don't know the situation. So, Which, honestly, if that is the case, I think that's a simp move. Like, if you're going to be a dude yeah. and you're going to go date a girl, and she's doing something before you get there that you are consciously aware of, then that's a real simp move to try to get her to stop her hustle. Like, are you going to start throwing her 10 grand a month now? Right. Like what is, what is the trade off for that? Like that's a lame move. It's like a dude that goes after a stripper and then gets mad that they're still stripping. Like, (laughs) what what were you thinking? That's lame. Simps. A lot of simps in the building, Jesse. I don't know. I would be happy to be with a woman making 10 G's a month. Right. I'm sh- I'll be like, <laughs> right. I'll be, I'll be a sugar baby for you. I don't even care. I'll be chilling yeah. at the crib. Like when you need some dishes done, I got you. I cook. I can cook, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> I would learn how to cook. I would find some skills. I would start like redoing the cabinets or something. <laughs> carpeting, molding. Do you know how to do carpets? No, but I'm going to learn. <laughs> yeah. What do you need? I will bolster your house. I, you have all the time in the world, right? You yeah. got that money coming in. Yeah, now that I'm not working, I mean, I could find skills and hobbies. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'd learn some shit. I can do some shit. I cook. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty nice in the chefing, honestly. Yeah, you said you've been hunger trapping girls on Snapchat. That's yeah, you know? the hunger trap. You know, the hunger trap is the new thirst trap. Bitches love food. Dog hoes love food. They, they just, do. Everyone loves food, right? I'll I'll just send them pictures of my uh, five eggs and five strips of bacon that I make every morning. <laughs> Is that what you eat for dinner too? Pretty much, yeah. My, uh, my microwave broccoli, steamed broccoli in the microwave. That's good. Mm. You know what I do with vegetables? I like to roast them. Yeah, that's I a good. Drizzle, yeah, I drizzle them with a little olive oil. And then I season them right there and then I throw them in the oven. Yeah, throw some sea salt on there. Yeah, a little sea salt, a little bit of pepper. Sometimes I throw some Cajun on there, just a little, just a little zing. And yeah. then I roast them. If you really want, um, you can do that. Roast some vegetables. I'll roast like some carrots and some broccoli, some other stuff. And then I will put them, once they're roasting, I'll make a risotto on the stove and then throw them into the risotto. I don't even know what a risotto is, but that yeah. sounds nice. I mean, bro, I make a bomb. I make a vegan risotto. I make some vegan gnocchi and some vegan pesto. They don't have to be vegan, but I can make them vegan because I'm versatile, you know, and just <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the vegan girls out there. I got you too. I'll cook for yeah. y'all. But yeah, I make a mean risotto. The keto risotto is the constant stirring, bro. Risotto is very fickle, so you can't let it burn, you know. Mm-hmm. Some people like to use water. I personally like to use an organic veggie broth. Really adds a little bit more flavor to the risotto. But, you know, do your thing. <laughs> Whatever. You know? I went you to know. the supermarket today. The broth was, like, swiped off the shelf. Yeah, broth is key, bro. Like broth some is nice... hot right now. The Yo, broth the broth is, is hot. hot. <laughs> Ain't that a little Wayne album? The broth yeah. is hot. <laughs> <laughs> what is the way is the way now block is hot yeah yeah <laughs> broth is hot the vegan edition <laughs> set the oven to 400 degrees yeah, bro yeah that's how you gotta do it man we ain't playing in the kitchen no more we out here we out here chefing that's the, the thing about chefing the hardest part about cooking is chopping vegetables and shit like just chopping shit up it takes a lot of time like you yeah. can do the, the rest of it just chisel some olive oil put stuff on pans a little salt and pepper here and there but you know but the chopping takes time. Yeah, whenever my ex and I would cook, she would make me chop the vegetables. Yeah, she's giving you that. That's because it's the it's the that's the, the bitch work. It is absolutely. That's that's where you chop it, and the chopping is hard. And I found, bro, like you got to get some quality knives now. Now that I'm cooking, I'm like, man, I gotta I gotta step my knife game up, you know, and get me a little knife sharpener and holler at my- Cutco. <laughs> Cutco. My brother used to slang Cutco door to door. <laughs> do they do they make good knives are their knives good though i have no idea <laughs> yeah my brother used to slay it door to door we had cut co at the house but i wasn't cooking back then or what were like the went to like ninja knives like the late night infomercials or was like uh ginsu's or something ginsu isn't that like a japanese sword or some shit a ginsu I think they were ginsu I'm, knives. Yeah, that's bad. All right. I don't know. The only late night knew I do was the dude that did the sham wow. Yeah. That Vince dude. Offer. That was the guy. Yeah. 
Is he still alive? I think, yeah, he did get beat up by a prostitute a while back. He got like, beat up by a prostitute? Yeah, I, I, I forget what the story was. <laughs> That's a story I want to hear about. I think they got into a fist fight with each other. <laughs> Can you imagine you just like square up and some girl just tees up, man? Yeah. Just gives you a one two. Man, you're gonna call the cops on her because <laughs> you're getting your ass beat. Yeah. If you got beat up by a girl, would you call the cops? No, I wouldn't tell anybody. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'd never call the cops, bro. If I got beat up by a girl, I'm taking that to my grave. But so like, I no- fell down the stairs. Like, you didn't even have <laughs> stairs at your house. So like, I was at someone else's house. It was just a small step from my front walking out yeah. the house. It's yeah, I- it's icy out. <laughs> like, bro. it's August, dude. <laughs> That's my nightmare, getting beat up by a girl. She's all Instagramming live, laying hands on me. Yeah, right. <laughs> that would be the that would be the worst. I mean, getting your ass beat nowadays is you can't get your ass beat. Like if I'm at a fight and I hear somebody yell world star, like we're fighting to the death. You better kill me. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're not, like there's if it's, on, it's being filmed. It's like I, I would rather go to jail for murder uh, than be embarrassed on the internet. <laughs> yeah i mean listen a murder sentence a murder rap is like seven to life bro if it's like a fight you can get up you can get parole in a couple of years you know what you can't get is forever yeah you can't get paroled from an ass whooping that goes viral dog that's gonna be there forever you're just gonna and then and then what happens like what are you gonna try to get a job and it's like I, you look familiar nah no i'm not familiar <laughs> no no i'm pretty sure i've seen you hey, that's the guy i got beat up by that yeah you'll be that guy forever do you think any I wonder girls what are... we gotta do, because uh, I want to find a new job in the next like six months. Might have to take this podcast offline for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to go dark on the Wally Man. <laughs> the key is, we or just, have... just like to be like that. This is me, baby. This is what you get. <laughs> Either that, or just on anything Lonely Man's. Instead of like like everything now online, I just put Ben Bo. But yeah. I'm like I'm like LinkedIn profile. It says my real name. I'll put uh, J Burl. <laughs> JB Game. <dog>. JB Game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how those letters work together, but it sounds dope. <laughs> <laughs> JB Game. <laughs> ben Bo and B G- and J Game. That's it, bro. You can be J Game. I should be. Yeah. There we go. There's our new team, J Game. J Bro, you sound like a you sound like a hip hop DJ, <laughs> like. Yeah. yeah, like all of us will just sound like rappers. Paul Cyphers, like everyone always says, uh, he already sounds like a rapper. Now we got Bembo, J Game. Yeah, bro, we're Jimmy about to cash. <laughs> Jimmy, we all sound like rappers. <laughs> that is true. We don't rap though. No. We're about to be a comedy. We're about to be like a. Uh, we're about to be a comedy cipher squad. Yeah. Like instead of like you know how they do rap ciphers, we're It'll just gonna be a take battle two- group. Yeah, we're just gonna take turns dropping bars, but comedy bars, like one-liners and some. Were you ever at Bishop's Lounge where they do like the one-liner contest? It was like that. Like our crew would just like like just drop like heavy jokes like one after another. <laughs> We'd come through hot. I was there one time I did it, and I think Dave won. Yeah, we made him do the basketball joke. Which, by the way, is one of my favorite jokes of all time. But Such yeah, a great he joke. dropped it. He won't do it anymore. But he we'll, won't. He we'll, hates we'll, it. But he did it that night, and it yeah. murdered. He won the contest. Yeah, we're like, joke. you're going to win this contest if you do the <laughs> basketball joke. <laughs> I think I even used it on my Tinder profile for a while. I liked it that much. <laughs> so good. I might bring that back if I go back, bring back on Tinder. How does that work? Because the joke is uh, I'm trying to learn Braille so I can finally read a basketball. Right now, I think it just says, ooh. <laughs> but he, like, drags it out for mad long. Did you just type, like, oh, oh, ooh, oh. yeah. Just, oh, <laughs> just a bunch of O's. <laughs> like, two lines worth of O's. <laughs> it's so good. Honestly, it just it hits. And it, that hit. That's a very clever joke. I was like, when I first heard him say that, I was just like, man, that Dave Williams, he's probably the best writer in Worcester. Shout out Dave Williams, top Shout- joke writer in New England. <laughs> in the Northeast. In the Northeast United States. Yeah. He's actually the top joke writer east of the Mississippi. I don't know if you guys know that, <laughs> but east of the Mississippi, there's Dave Dave Williams. North of the Mason-Dixon? 
<laughs> the Mason Dixon line. That's right. Yo, I still get this scar from uh, us hiking last week when I fucking fell in front of those two girls. <laughs> You know what? So, what are the odds? We walk down a whole mountain. We go down the hardest part where we're like scaling rocks and trying to figure out which way to go down and sliding yeah. and scrambling, and we're perfectly fine. But as soon as you see two girls, ow, ow, ow! <laughs> I just went. I went down hard, and um, I almost fell into a ditch. Like <laughs> they, they just this arm didn't land on the side of like a rock. It like caught me like I was like leaning on the side of a couch or something. I just did, did you play it off like you just wanted to lay down? Like I, I don't I, I was joking. I was like, I should have just like posed and be like, what's up, like <laughs> did they did they ask if you were okay? The, they were like, Oh my god, they're like, Oh no. <laughs> but the girl was like, I just fell in that same exact spot. She did. I watched her fall when I was did coming you? down. Yeah, I was like, dying. I just <laughs> fell right there. And like as soon as I stood up, Rob Green took a step and fell down in the street. <laughs> like, oh. Yo, then, it's always like that. Yeah, and then Austin was like, nah, not me, dog. And he just walked around that rock, like went onto like the grass. <laughs> nah, you ain't getting me. Because it, it's always like that. Like, remember, like when me, you, and Kendra fell in the same exact spot, like three in a row, just like yeah. whom, whom, whom. Yeah. It, I saw those girls, that one girl fell down the mountain. She fell pretty hard. That's why they were chilling there because they were ahead of us because we saw them. They were coming down as we were almost reaching the top. Yeah, and, and we chilled at the top for like 20 minutes. Long, probably a while than that because some people even came to the top after us, yeah. sat down, ate granola bars and chilled and hung out for a while. Another group of people came and they all left and we were still chilling at the top. We were up there for a while, like probably yeah. like a half hour, I'd say. Yeah, half hour, 20 minutes. And then we came back down and we saw those girls and right when we saw them, one of them had just eaten it. Like she just ate it super hard. And I was just like, oh no, are you guys okay? <laughs> and they're just like, yeah, we're just going to hang out here. And I was like, well, y'all got the ski poles, honestly. Yeah, they had the poles, all the gear, everything. I think the poles are a trap, especially if you have two, because here's the thing about having two poles. I think you depend on them too much and you don't yeah. have your own balance. And then I don't know. I feel like you, you're just, you're kind of trying to balance with the poles more than you're just trying to walk. Like one stick is okay. Cause it's just one and you're, you kind of got your other arm for balance, but once right. you go two, then you kind of lose it. It's not skiing. Yeah. I kind of felt that when we had the, when we took the one stick each up to uh Manad dock, I would like, I would lean on the pole, the stick a little bit too much. I'm like, if this stick gives out, like I'm done. Yeah, like I would lean a little bit. I'm like, oh, I got the stick to protect me. But if that just like slid out, I would just fall even further and like bust <laughs> my shoulder. <clears throat> yeah, it's a uh, this. The, yeah, I don't like depending on it too much because then you find out like you you're using muscles that you didn't even know you had. Like yeah. the the first time when we went to Musalaki, I didn't even I forgot my hip flexors were a thing. I was like, holy shit! Like I. I couldn't, I could barely walk. Like the, I had to do some stretches and shit. Like it was serious. Yeah. I was like hip flexors. Is that why they like the Kegel exercises girls do at the gym where they're spreading their legs? You know, uh, exercise... Kegels, you can't see someone doing Kegels. That's like internal. You can't see someone doing Kegels? No. Word. Yeah. You like squeeze. Uh, like you ever, ever tried to stop peeing like midstream? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck <laughs> when i start peeing i <laughs> when i pee i pee like why would i stop trying why would i stop midstream i don't maybe you hear something in the woods you're like what was that like let me stop <laughs> no i'm like i don't know I better... what the situation but that's what you use to do at kegels like whatever that like those muscles are okay well what is the the exercises that girls do at the gym where they sit on the thing and you you like spread your legs out you know what i'm talking about i guess you're not really you, you, I, I don't know what they're called um yeah you kind of your thighs like opening your like knees open and close yeah it's like you're sitting in a, like a chair yeah. and there's like a weight you either have them on the inside of your legs or you have them on the outside there's one that's like starts with your legs wide yeah. and you push the weight in and then there's one that starts with the weight on the outside of your knees i and think you push the one the on the out. inside that you like squeeze it it's like a spring you sque it's like the thigh master the th you is that what it's called like the the, the thigh 80s. master, the eighties, and you yeah. were in high socks and leggings, bro. I'm yeah, the uh, thigh master. Suzanne Summers, I think, sold the thigh master, if I'm not mistaken. Suzanne Summers, she was on that TV show that came on right before 
Fresh Prince of Bel- Fresh Prince of Bel Air, right after step Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Step by step, yeah, she was on there forever. She looked, she was like eighty at the time or whatever she was, and she was like, not bad. Like <laughs> she, yeah, she was probably like her forties. Suzanne 80. Summers? No, she's was it, probably- she was on Three's Company, right? Back yeah. in the, she was probably in her 20s, and then it was like 20 years later in the 90s. In the 90s? Nah, bro. In the night, let's see. How old was she in the 90s? Let's see. So when I used to watch it. That show was on in like what, like 94? 90, 92? 92? Okay, so yeah, she probably would have been like 45. Exactly. Yeah, she's looking good. She was looking good in 45. So Step what is she now in like her 60s? 74 right now okay so step by step came on 91 to 98 so by the end of long yeah seven seasons so by the end of step by step she was 52 so by the time i saw it because by then because i wasn't in africa i wasn't here until and i didn't have tv in the house until probably like the later time so when i saw she was in her 50s already yeah yeah, she was looking yeah. good for 50-something. She was. I, was like, I didn't know that show ran seven seasons. <laughs> I think Fresh Prince was only on four seasons. Really? I thought the Fresh Prince ran at least four seasons with with uh, the new Aunt Viv. There are like a hundred-something episodes. I found a box set at Best Buy with, when I was there a few months ago. There was like 125 episodes. That's a lot for four seasons. No, yeah. it ran for six seasons. Oh, okay, six. Yeah, so from 90, yeah, 1996, it was six seasons. Man, it's so crazy to me now. Like, now when you think about it, like, there's not a lot of shows, like, that go for a lot of seasons anymore. Like, six seasons is a long time. Yeah, Netflix will ax a show after one or two seasons if oh, it's not yeah. popping. They just, yeah, they'd, be, they'd be sniffing everything. Netflix yeah. would be canceling shows. Even shows that are popping get canceled, like... Yeah. It just and it's not even sometimes the show's bad. It's for a lot of like money reasons too. Like you look at like all the Marvel stuff they were doing, like The Punisher. That was like a really good show, and they canceled that after like two seasons. They're just like nah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, they be canceling all sorts of shit. So if you can get a show that gets how many seasons do you need to go to get syndicated? Like five. <sighs> that's you syndication. Like, you need like a hundred episodes. Man, because syndication's where it's at. Like that's yeah. <laughs> that's when you get royalties, right? Yeah. Yeah, royalties, royalties, royalties. I believe uh, Charlie Lamar Sheen a signed a, a 1090 deal. That's the craziest deal. What is a 1090 deal? If the first 10 episodes go good, you sign on for 90 more episodes. So that show he did after Two and a Half Men um, was it Anger Management? Yeah. The first season is 10 episodes, the second season is the 90 episodes. <laughs> They just shot ninety. It just ran it. It just kept it going. They didn't like. I don't think they ever ended the season. Wait, they did ninety episodes in the season. Why didn't y'all just break up some seasons, Doc? They were like, let's get rid of this fucking show. They're like, they signed the deal though. They're like, fuck it, let's go for it. So is he in syndication then? Yeah. Damn, that Charlie Sheen. No wonder he's doing so much drugs. He just got that syndication money rolling in from Two and a Half Men from. Anger management, he's just like he's just snorting syndication money. <laughs> yeah, because he had that he had that that crazy heat, the heat from him being crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that. that uh the tiger blood shit. Yeah, he had the tiger blood heat, and then yeah, he signed the 1090 deal, and then like no one cared about Charlie Sheen anymore, but like, yo, we already signed this like wild <laughs> deal with it. We gotta we gotta do it. We're doing 90. I'm not gonna lie, 1090, man. We I don't know how t- many other people got that deal. I was about to say, can the Lonely Man's podcast get a 1090 deal, dog? <laughs> yeah, bank on us. Yeah, we can do it. We'll come up with 10 bangers, dog. And then the rest yeah. of the 90, no promises. But first, <laughs> yeah, the a- first 10 are going to be hot. The 90, <laughs> but like lukewarm. But <laughs> but you signed the deal, dog. Yeah. <laughs> Write the check. <laughs> I'm going to cut the check. <laughs> that's that's. Man, there ain't nothing better than telling somebody to just cut the check. <laughs> like that's that's you know you've made it in comedy when you get your money before you do the shows. Mm-hmm. That's how you know you've made it. Like, yo, I ain't going on stage without the check, homie. <laughs> like that's 
that's I was reading this book and apparently that's and that's how you know you've made it. Like people used to like hustle for their deals or get door deals afterwards, but once they made it, they're like, nah, I'd get the check, then I do the show. Like yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. And I'm like, man. So yeah, I was doing- on a small show the other night and they were like, they like he the booker was like handed out the money to everybody and to some people that hadn't even gone on stage yet. And I was like, yo, just just bounce. <laughs> <laughs> like, the audience sucks now. Just bounce up, take your money and run, dog. Which show were you on the other night? Was it the one in Connecticut? Yeah, I went to the elbow room with Cyphers. Oh, uh, yeah. Were you on that too? No, I didn't do a spot, but still shout out Paul Gregory. What's up? Oh, man. Are I'll you trying to spot. get a, are you getting a, are you trying to get a spot on the show in the next one? Uh, yeah, I'll probably message him tomorrow. Be like, what up? Oh, man. Yeah, I was doing I did some stuff with them a while ago, actually. Yeah, that's a good room. And even it now is. with the social distancing, they had like 25 people in there. Man, yeah, I mean, it was pretty hot. It's good. Maybe I might have to email them again. That's the thing. I haven't been sending out any emails, you know? Yeah. Shout out to my management team. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I had a good summer run at the beer garden. Now I have nothing until November 24th, something. Yeah. yeah. I was about to say, like, I did. I actually uh, got booked on a show today. Um, I'm doing a show in November um, in Providence. So fingers crossed, you know, you never know. But Is that outside? I have no idea. I didn't even ask that many questions, you know. Who is it? Uh, Brianna's running it. Uh-huh. It's her show that she's doing in Providence. So <laughs> nice. she normally she normally puts on decent stuff. So whatever. Hell yeah. No, Brianna yeah. knows how to produce a show. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to her, Brianna. Would work doing a thing. Straight hustler. She hit me up yesterday. She went to Spider Gates in Leicester, which is a town that touches Worcester. And uh, Spider Gates is like this old haunted cemetery and like supposedly there's like seven gates that you walk through that's supposed to be like the seven gates to hell and i think there's a cave i never went there i, I grew up like right next to lester all my friends are from lester but like kids would always go to spider gates in the middle of the night park on the side of the road by the airport and get busted by the cops because like you're not like there's no reason to park over there unless you're doing some shady shit oh are you like not supposed to be going to spider gates or not after dark oh is it like somebody runs it or it's just like it's just just there it's just the old cemetery oh shit but uh yeah so every all i knew about spider gates was you go there in the middle of the night and you get arrested for underage drinking that was it i was like fuck that so i but brianna went there in the middle of the day yesterday and texted me that she went into a cave and saw a flame burning and got scared and ran away (laughs) No, that sounds about right, because what the fuck? <laughs> and I didn't, like, hear from her after that, but she texted you today, so I guess she's okay. She, she made it. She made it. She said, actually, in her text, nigga, I made it. So I knew <laughs> she was good. Uh, she's, she's, we're good. I was like, to drop the M-bomb in text messages. For sure. Yeah, you know, hardcore. Yeah, Brianna's pretty hardcore. Nah, she'd never drop an N-bomb <laughs> in my presence. But I don't know what people do when no one's around. You know, I just assume all white people drop the end bomb when no one's around. I oh, assume, yeah, we let it we let it fly pretty hard. I assume. Yeah, I just assume that when you guys were all in cars with windows up or listening to rap or just anytime yeah. someone's fucking around, someone's like, oh, and it's like a taboo word to say. I just, yeah. just you, you got to look both ways like you're crossing the street. Yeah, roll them windows up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nigga. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Remember, I used to do a joke about that. White kids looking both ways before they said, and then I can't even remember the joke. I've done, I used to do a lot of, I realized I've done jokes about everything and now I don't can't remember any of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens. I don't even know if any of them are good. They're probably garbage. Yeah, we remind each other of jokes all the time. Yeah. It's like I, something we did at an open mic once. Yeah, well, because we did, the doo-doo crew got its name by doing a lot of doo-doo. Like we were slanging a lot of doo-doo mm. and I wish I was still able to sling the same amount of doo-doo because Lord knows a shit ton of it is in my notebook, bro. Some straight, yeah. real, real garbage is in there right now. Bro. Went up to uh, Manchester, New Hampshire Thursday night. Uh, COVID does not exist up there. What'd you do up there? Did an open mic at the Strange Brew. Oh, you went up to Strange Brew on Thursday? Yeah. Hmm. With, I'm trying uh, to think, what was I doing on Thursday? Scythe Dog. You went up with Scythe Dog? Yeah. I'm kind of hurt that y'all didn't hit me up. I don't know why we didn't hit you up. No, you guys were always doing that. You guys are just always doing shit and then just telling me about it afterwards. Like some haters, which I'm not going to lie. 
it's not that tight. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why we didn't hit you up. We might have left before. Actually, I have no idea. My bad. We'll hit you up uh, next time. Yeah, that's what you guys always say. But next time, we go, my bad, dog. We were out there. I'm not going to lie. I'm not feeling the love. What is the, where you guys are going to hit me up on like January 2nd? Like, yeah, we went to Austin already, dog. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bunch of haters. Oh, are you still coming? My bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wanted to go, dog? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, you did put down that deposit. My bad, dog. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's>... yeah. <laughs> haters bro just always just out there doing things how was it uh it was okay we went up like first and second and then got out of there did Um, you guys get there pretty early yeah yeah we got there before anybody there's like maybe one other there's one kid that we saw at the keen mike Mm -hmm. um what's his name i don't know it was the guy that went up like did one joke and he was like, "What else? What else?" <laughs> uh, was, it, was it the guy in the suit or the, the guy that's like Nanny Bonaduce? No, uh, I think he had glasses. I think he said he had kids. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he's got. He, might have had, he looked like uh like a young Danny Trejo. <laughs> <laughs> young Danny Trejo. Oh, uh, Danny Trejo. That's the dude. That's Machete, right? Machete. Yeah. Machete. Machete. Yeah, we we had machetes in Africa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is that was like Tuesdays, bro. We just be chopping shit, you know, getting through the forest and shit. I saw the funniest thing about the funniest video about COVID in Congo, and it was just it made me laugh. It's not saying like COVID hits every other country and everyone's quarantining, and then it goes co- coronavirus hits. And then you just hear these people, these African guys made this song Coronavirus. That's the name of the song. And they're just like bumping. Coronavirus. <laughs> they're just dancing. Like, bro. And that is the most Congolese thing ever. Like just dancing to the song titled Coronavirus. It slaps, bro. The beat, it's, it's fuego. I'm Do like, they have coronavirus down there? <coughs> has it penetrated the Congo? That's the thing, bro. No. Yeah. Like, I do that joke about, like, people not caring about coronavirus in the Congo because they got actual viruses out there. Like, it's a joke, but it's not, like, that jokey because it's just real. Like, when yeah. you're dealing with, like, just everyday life in the Congo, fuck a quarantine. Fuck a coronavirus. So, like, this sh- does it kill you? I mean, it doesn't kill you. 3%? take my chances doc <laughs> like, they're, they're not sweating it out there so the one part is though um like international flights and travel were kind of hampered but mm-hmm. the one the crazy part is like in in congo so like doctors and stuff will get money and like funding for reporting people that have the virus so what's been happening is a lot of like doctors have been faking the virus and blaming like things that aren't the virus on the virus to get funding for it Uh, people are doing that here yeah i mean now just imagine in the congo it's like 10 times worse yeah but yeah people well people are doing that here and yeah someone told me try to tell me someone tried to explain to me today that the virus was airborne i was like i don't think that means what you think it means (laughs) Like, like if it was airborne we would all walk outside take a deep breath and have it yeah. Like we would be breathing in the oxygen anytime we walked outside if it was airborne. Like if it was airborne, we'd all be we'd all be infected like deadly. It's not airborne. That's not what that means. Like, like but I don't think people really understand it. So I didn't really try to go too much into the details of it. I don't know. Because I don't but, understand it. I just know it's not airborne. That's the yeah. extent. We're in the second wave now. So it's gonna lock down for a little bit and then we'll see what's up after the winter time. Colorado lockdown. Yeah. The, the, do you think do you think we're gonna lock down here? Probably, yeah. Now here's the thing. Do you think Austin's gonna be locked down when we go? Uh I don't know. These lockdowns can't uh, be too yeah, long. Yeah, we like did they... we have a we have a trip planned for Austin first week of January. We're gonna head shout, down there with shout out to the ATX. Get ready, we coming. Head down to the ATX. He was popping down there. Look for Joe Rogan. 
<laughs> Joe haul at us. It's, We're on the search for for Joe Rogan. I'm gonna I'm gonna start a hashtag in it. The search the search for Rogan quest for Rogan. <laughs> quest for Rogan. Well, I'm not, honestly I'm just on the quest for like stage time. Can we get some stage time? <laughs> yeah, I did try to join uh, Austin open mic group and it's like private and you had to answer three questions. It was uh, why do you want to do comedy in Austin? And I put Alex Jones. So. <laughs> Do you run any shows? And I said, I put my I put my real show that I run in Worcester. Mm-hmm. And then it said, name your top three dead comedians. And I put Bill Cosby, Chris D'Elia, and Brian Callen. <laughs> Dang, you didn't put Louis C.K. on there? because <laughs> he's somehow resurrecting his career right now. What? I thought he died in that horrible masturbation accident. <laughs> <laughs> Spontaneously combusted. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't that spontaneous? He did jerk it and then busted. But but he so I, I didn't know he I didn't know he was bouncing back. He's bouncing back though. He's still doing the thing. Yeah, he dropped a special in March or April. Oh, that's right. And then and people still got mad, right? But yeah, anytime he does anything, people get mad. People are still mad. He's, like, he's in the Comedy Store documentary that's airing on Showtime, like recently. Yeah, like okay. like uh, tonight's the last episode. But they talked to him after all this shit went down. Yeah. Oh, okay. What does he What does he say about it? Uh he never got past at the comedy store. Mitzi didn't like him. Like so, he, he never he never did the comedy store. He he did an audition, and like one minute in, Mitzi was like, "Light him, get him off the stage." <laughs> so, <laughs> He was like a minute into his act and they lit him and he was like fuck that it just kept, it did like his like whole like his whole five minutes or whatever yeah well first of all if you let me a minute in like you i feel like if you're gonna get an audition and you're gonna light somebody five minutes in i get that it's your club but unless they're being like completely ridiculous like yeah. taking off their clothes getting naked and dropping like random unnecessary air end bombs in the crowd or whatever like unless they're being like way off the spectrum let somebody finish their time yeah like lie to my four minutes or whatever but let somebody do their time you can't just be like i didn't like this joke or this person's this comic's persona or whatever yeah. Get that was her stage. thing she like she ran a, a tough club oh, but, uh, man. He, he ended up shooting a special there like five six years ago was mitzi still alive when he did it yeah but she wasn't in charge of the club uh this guy Adam Egot took it over in like 2013 and like completely changed it, like brought up like cleaned house, got rid of all these old comics, and then brought in a whole bunch of like new headliners. Brought Joe Rogan back. <laughs> Let Louis shoot a special there. Didn't did did Joe Rogan have a problem with Mitzi? Uh no. Watch the documentary, bro. <laughs> you don't know the Joe Rogan's comedy store story? No, I don't. Well, in I know that. 2006 or 2007 he confronted carlos mencia on stage about stealing jokes wait while he was on stage or while carlos was on stage joe rogan was bringing up uh, a comic that wrote on carlos's show and he like called carlos carlos mencilia oh that's good <laughs> so carlos stormed the stage they got into an argument joe like accused him of stealing like Blah, blah, blah. Brian Redband shot the whole thing and put it up on YouTube. It was a viral video back in like 06. Man, I wasn't viral back then, but now the thing is, does Carlos Mencia really want problems with Joe Rogan? Like just on a, like a straight street fight? Like, they had want- the same. They had the same management, and the management told Joe he had to apologize to Carlos. Carlos had the mind of Mencia on Comedy Central. He was yeah. huge. Yeah, back then he was huge. Back yeah. then <laughs> that management group fucked up. <laughs> yeah, like Chappelle left. And then Mencia basically did his show, the Mexican version of Chappelle's show, blew up. He just stole his jokes and just changed nigger to beaner. (laughs) Basically, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So Joe Rogan was like, I'm not apologizing. Uh, His management dropped him. Uh, Mitzi banned him from the store. And Joe didn't go back until like 2013, 2014. Man. Yeah, that management team fucked up. Yeah. They backed the wrong horse, you know? Like uh, <laughs> <laughs> like back in the 80s, Michael Jordan, um, his rookie year, 
they um converse was like the biggest shoe brand at the time and they told michael jordan they wouldn't give him a shoe deal because they didn't they were he wasn't better than or bigger than larry bird or magic johnson and so they wouldn't give him a shoe deal that fucked up because yeah. now, now the only thing converse has is chuck taylor's and they don't make nba shoes anymore and now nike gave him jordan and then Jordan, then his shoe became the Jordan brand, which is now a billion dollar brand. And then Nike bought Converse. So, damn, you, son. It, yeah, you back the wrong horse. You end up taking the yeah. L. Yeah, you, you can't. People out here just backing the wrong horses. You know, you just. Does, uh, does LeBron have a billion dollar deal with Nike? I don't know if it's a billion dollar deal, but it's close because he has his own, like, he doesn't have like Jordan brand. He has like King James brand, which is. Yeah. But it's not as iconic as Jordan Brand. I think because the thing about Jordan Brand is just like when it started, it was very like new, you know, like, no, not everyone was getting shoe deals back then. Mm -hmm. Like and and Jordan was like the first person who had like custom shoes like designed by a new designer every year. And he like worked with like the Nike team and they made custom shoes. But the Jordan ones, they're almost like Air Force Ones or SB Dunks, but. The Jordan, they made the SB Dunks off the Jordan ones, like a variation of it. But the Jordan ones are so fire. That was the only Jordans I ever had. Was the Jordan the, ones? The ones, yeah, they're yeah. so fuego. That's the only ones. My favorite are the ones, and then I love ten through thirteen. Tens through thirteens are the ones, and the ones he wore, the Space Jams he wore the tens. But. I've bought two pairs of Jordan twos because I had a Bill Murray from Space Jam costume. <laughs> and he rocks the Jordan two Chicago colorway. So I, like, I bought two pairs of those. But the, uh, what is the bottom of the shoe? The sole? Yeah. The sole and the toe like split apart and they flap like this when I walk. It's some oh. defect with that shoe. Both pairs were like that. Were they like real Jordans or were they like Fordans, the bootleg Jordans? No, they were real Jordans. I just bought like used pairs of them though for like under 50 bucks. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah so they were like pretty beat up. But I just needed them for a Halloween costume. You know, wear them out when I'm like fucked up. Did you rock the Toon Squad jersey? Toon yeah, I got the squad. I got the jersey. I got the shorts. Man, that's what and we should have uh, rocked for Halloween. <laughs> we should have been Michael Jordan and Bill Murray in Space yeah. Jam. That would have been a good good tag team costume. Did you shave your head? Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have great hair, but I would shave it. My barber told me my hair grows in very lusciously. He said some people have bald spots in the back. Yeah. I ain't got a bald spot, dog. In fact, I've actually grown... Um, yeah, I'm growing in thick. I'm going to actually grow the mohawk out for when we go down there, bro. Yeah. I'm going to grow the high top fade mohawk. So I'm going to blow this out and then I'm just <laughs> going to have it faded into a mohawk like into the back. Nice. Not a mohawk. I mean a mullet. Oh, uh, yeah. We're all going mullets. Yeah. I'm going to have the high top fade mullet. I don't even know what that is, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to rock it heavy. I've never tried to grow up my hair. I'm going to try to just grow the back straight out. So that keep means you're not getting like this. Keep the sides faded. Are you not going to get a fade until we like go then or like just grow it out until we go? No, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep the sides and the top maintained, but I'm going to grow the back out the whole time. Mm, Why don't you just grow it all out and then just get it cut that way? (sighs) Could do that. Well, just because it's like the thing about haircuts and I don't know, my hair might be a little bit more fickle. It's like, it's, it's, it's kind of harder to do it that way versus if you just have more hair, then it gives like the barber more options and like an easier way to do that. Yeah. But Maybe I'll wait. I'll wait through uh, November. Yeah, bro. No, no shave November, dog. (laughs) We're we're in it now, dog. I'm not shaving shit. (laughs) (laughs) Growing this out gnarly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's. I ain't trimming anything but the tree in December. (laughs) That's right, man. I uh, what did what did what did he say? Oh well, I guess I'll be gone till November. Shout out to White Clef, but (laughs) anyway. Yeah, that's for, that's a real in the cut reference. I used to love that album though. Refugee All Stars. Whatever happened to the Refugee All Stars? I don't know. Who else was it? Lauren Hill? That's because yeah, Lauren Hill, White Clef, John Prowse. Forte. Prowse, is that? I mean, that's the Fugees. It was White Clef, Lauren Hill, Prowse. Yeah, what's who is? Refugee, I couldn't name one refugee all star song. Yeah, he was a uh, John Forte. Yeah, he used to be part of the, the Fugees as well. John Forte, yeah, 
Um, yeah, and he, let me see, when was he with the? I've never heard of John Forte. Well, maybe he just used to work with the Fugees a lot. Um, the last time I heard Praz was Ghetto Superstar. He had a hot verse on that. That was it. Let me see. Yeah, I guess he worked with him on a couple songs. Um, and he used to partner with Praz on some other songs, Avenues from Money Talks. Um, yeah. Shout out John Forte. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> I never want to be on the podcast. I'm sure you have nothing else going on. Yeah, it's he, funny if I talk shit about John Forte and he like actually hollers at us. He's like, dude, he's, I'm <laughs> producing all these people's albums. I do soundtracks. <laughs> That's the thing about the music industry, though. There's so many like people that are doing things that like whose name never gets mentioned. Yeah. Like, unless a producer is like, if you Metro don't trust you, I'm gonna shoot. <laughs> like, no one knows who's producing shit. Like, right. if I was a producer, I'd have to probably put like a signature like that on everything. That's why they started doing it. They're like, no one knows who the fuck we are. We're getting fucked over. Yeah. Yeah. You heard the Kanye track. You can't just be out here signing contracts in the music industry. Yeah. No love, no royalties, no loyalties, no nothing. I don't know. The music industry is a, it's a crazy business. Mm-hmm. I've never been involved, but I just imagine it's crazy. The only thing I know about music is that it'll, it'll get you panties. Like panties will get thrown on the stage. And you don't even have to be good at music. That's the part about music that's crazy. That's like the biggest difference between music and comedy. Like you can go out and kill. People won't even re- remember your name, but you go play guitar for like five minutes to be like, yeah, I'm about to go get some sheet. I'm about to go beat some cheeks like that yeah. quick. People will jam out to it. You can't jam out to bad comedy or even like good comedy. People are just like, I'm not feeling it right now. I don't want to jam out to this. But even if it's good comedy, people are like, ha ha, that guy's funny. You yeah. want to go grab a beer and listen to this music? Like, yeah. Yeah, you can't like jam out to good comedy. Like, it's not like you can retell somebody's jokes and if they try, they're gonna fuck it up and not even get it right. Like, have you ever heard somebody try to retell a joke from a comedian? It's oh, I, horrible. Fuck, I don't even bother anymore. I'm like, yeah. I will mangle this. I have a terrible memory. I will not do this joke any justice. Listen, I, can't I have tell a good someone memory. Else's story. You can't. You can't. I even have a good memory and I could do it, but it's just not the fucking same. It's just not. Yeah. Eddie Murphy has a great bit about that on Delirious, telling about people always trying to fuck up his jokes and shit and like trying to tell somebody else. And he, it's like the same idea. It's just like, yeah, real fucking funny, bro. You're, you're killing it. But the dude that can fucking play, that can play um, Oasis on his fucking guitar while he's slacklining, that dude's yeah. going to slack. <laughs> he's going to fucking, you can play an acoustic guitar and you're not getting, and, and you're still having problems like finding somebody, that's on you. You're not utilizing that power of the guitar. You don't even have to be good. Just play like yeah. one song, maybe like two songs that everyone can recognize and jam out to. We could try to develop an act where we're like the fun party guy that like everyone wants to hang out with and like do shots after the show. Ah, shots, shots. Tell Everybody. Like crazy sex stories and shit. Yeah, that's true. Well, we can make some in Austin. Hey, y'all. Hey, 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 hey. hey y'all. <laughs> Man, I guess, I mean, I guess if you like, if you are like a party act, like you, you, you wild out on stage and like people want to buy you shots and drinks afterwards and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I, I had some girls come ask for my number after a show that's happened before. Mm-hmm. So it's a possibility. The key is you have to be funny though. You can't suck. Yeah. <laughs> like you, if you go up there and eat a dick, no one wants to know your name. You one time I saw you got a girl's number after the show, you bombed like half your set <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Still, they were like yo what's good that first five minutes was hot we went ahead i bombed the first half or did i bomb the second half bomb the second half. it was, was like re- the first show back after quarantine you had like all new quarantine jokes up top you had the new joke energy and then as soon as you went into like your written material like it just like fell off after after that oh yeah that's but yeah those jokes are super hard yeah. um I mean, it's, it's, yeah, that was a rough time for everybody. I happens to be all the time, like at an open mic, like something weird will happen. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to go into a tried and true joke and it just falls apart. <laughs> I feel like cause at that point, you might as well double down. I yeah. think what it is now I'm, I'm starting to realize is like, you can't fear the bomb. Like if you're going to bomb, double the fuck down, like yeah. just eat a dick, like go all the way in, try all that material and stop giving a fuck. Like, 
there is no point in trying to save a bomb by going into your written. It, it almost feels desperate to yeah. the audience, you know. Like uh, I've heard old school like stories of old school guys be like, "Nope, to be, stay in the bomb. You eat that bomb." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that's what I'm starting to realize. I think all the times that I've had the worst bombs was because I tried to save myself from the bomb. Yeah, And it's like, that's not the way you save yourself from the bomb. Dive into the bomb. Embrace the bomb, bro. Love the bomb. Like, just, if you're going to bomb, bomb epically. Bomb, bombs over Baghdad, bro. Bomb <laughs> like Hiroshima. Like, just go in. Like, don't, don't just get, like, a little pipe bomb, bro. Go in on the bomb. That's what I've realized with the bombing. I'm not, I'm only going to bomb... I'm bombing full out here. That's what I'm saying. I'm going in on the bomb. But I guess it works still, right? If you get a number still, I guess it works. Who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? <laughs> now that we talk about it, I've been on a pretty gnarly streak of some bombs lately. <laughs> <laughs> did you perform anywhere this week? No. I did not. I haven't yeah, been on a stage like, since you just been last, rocking that one bomb last week. Yeah, since I ate that dick yeah. <laughs> about last week, and then I ate it pretty hard. And since that week, I've just I do need to get back on a stage. Yeah, I think that's yeah, that's been tricky. Well, because I was gonna go out to what's it called New Hampshire on Friday, and it snowed all crazy, and I was like, you're driving these weird back roads, so weird. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's just an excuse. I probably still could have went, but. I'll go up with you this Friday. No, I'm just going to go by myself and tell you about it the next day. Yeah, that <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, I went. What'd you guess? You and Paul can go without me. Yeah. No way. Paul's going to be like, I'm tired. Paul's, I've, <laughs> I've never, Paul's like the best at excuses. I'm just always very impressed at what he comes up with. But then uh, Friday, we did a show and then we went to a cigar bar until like 11. And then we walked across the street and got wings over. We didn't get home until like one in the morning. There's a there's wings over in Connecticut too. Yeah, wings over well, West Hartford. Oh, there's also wings. I had wings over in New Jersey. Wings over Rutgers or something like that. Yeah, there's wings. Okay, so it's a chain. Yeah, I do love like wings. Chain. Yeah, ne- I'd never heard of them until I came out here. I'm a big wings guy. Amherst was the first one. It's really, the, the hangar, I believe. That's what it's called. Yeah. Hmm. I've I think been- they and like a brewery have like a big place out there now. I've never been to Amherst. Um, I've only I went to like a like a rave out there once at like the like at the Amherst College Stadium or whatever. Okay, well those days are over. <laughs> raves are a thing of raves are a thing of the uh, the the BC era, right? Well, Paul Before said COVID. he went out to Amherst, like drove through like the college campus, and like <laughs> he, like there was no COVID out there. They were having like great <laughs> ragers. Dang, that's the beauty about college, man. You can just, college has an ability, like when you're there, you just have this rare ability to not give a fuck about anything. Mm. Because essentially what it is, is like a lot of kids are just like freedom from their parents for the first time. Because one, to go to college most of the time, for the majority of kids, you got to have money, right? And then most of the kids have always just been like home around their parents or whatever. And then you get like your own place in college. And then you're going to school, so you feel like you're doing something productive, and it's kind of hard. So when you're like, it's the weekend, baby, everyone's trying to reinvent themselves as the cool kids, so you got to go out of rage. So there's, like, all these factors combined to just make it, like, the craziest parties, like, ragers that anyone has known. Like, like when I was in college, there was this one pool party that went, like, international. Like, it it got so much media attention for just being this crazy party because it was, like, right when, like, Facebook, like, Evites were getting big. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, this is the power of Facebook, this party. And, like, all these people, like, people got arrested and shit. The football team got in fights. It was all sorts of shit. And then, like, the next semester, I met this girl. She was, like, a foreign exchange student from France. And I was, like, why the fuck would you come to Colorado State University? She said... I just typed in biggest party schools and I found your party on YouTube. So I came to Colorado (laughs) State University. And lo and behold, bro, that's, yeah, that shit got international news for throwing a pool party. I have to say, it was a pretty dope party. (laughs) (laughs) But like, pretty lit. Yeah, you can't do that kind of stuff anymore, though. Like, those Mm. days are over. Like, you can't just throw, like, when I remember when I was, uh, when I was probably like a sophomore, junior in college, right before we were able to go to bars, 
which is like the biggest party years, um, we had our own place off of campus, like right near the campus. And we used to throw ragers in this house. And one time we threw this rager, we had our own keg, our own jungle juice and a Gatorade thing that people are pouring out cups. Like we were going ham. And I'll just never forget this kid walks, like these kids are sitting there and he's just sitting by another keg. I'm like, where the fuck did this keg come from? He's like, no worries, bro. We brought our own keg. <laughs> like respect <laughs> <laughs> they just brought a traveling keg yeah so just they just go to parties and parties and just bring their own keg yeah and i was doing that all the time That's yeah you get you don't need an invite you just bring the keg in no you just bring your own keg bro don't worry about it we good it was like respect and after that it was like we started kicking it with him you know <laughs> yep. but like you can't do shit like that anymore those days are over unless you go to a college campus hmm. but I don't even think I could party in a college campus because I remember by my senior year I was so. We're in our thirties now. There's we should not be on a college campus. No, never. Like unless even we're by dropping my... somebody off. <laughs> yeah, I I came to uh, unless I'm going to be teaching a class at one of the <laughs> like I'm yeah. not going to be here. Unless I'm driving Uber. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the only well, reason I should be there. The one thing is that when I was we did have a bar on campus that I used to go get drinks with my professors at. That was pretty cool. Like people would come to this bar. That was like the only thing. But um, yeah, like even though by my senior year, though, I was so over, like I was ready to graduate already, you know, it's just like, it's like high school, like you get that senioritis and you're out, you can't go back. Mm -hmm. So once you reach that point, so like, but like now I don't even like to, I don't even like to go out. Like I always want to go out until I get home and it's like 6 p.m. on Friday and I'm like, nah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, even yeah. just like staying out, smoking a cigar and eating chicken with Paul. I was like, it is too fucking late. I just can't wait to go home and go to bed right now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like I do like, I do like smoking a cigar though. That's a new thing that you now put me on. Mm -hmm. I've done it. I used to do it like a little bit before, but now I'm definitely more into it than I used to be. But cause when I lived in Denver, we lived real close to the cigar bar and me and my boy used to go and drink like a, we drink brown liquor and smoke cigars and nothing made you feel doper just sitting back in a comfortable leather chair putting your feet up drinking brown liquor smoking yeah. a cigar like have a cognac yeah hell yeah we only that's the only time i drank brown liquor we drink that or we drink um scotch yep just because they were like yeah we bro we're straight we're men right here you know <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> we are we went to the sean connery school for men here <laughs> R.I.P. Baby. Yeah, I can't believe that he died. Now that we have no I social, I think he was ninety years old. <laughs> That's fair. But <laughs> how old does he know? Let me look up how old he was. You I think, think he made he it to 90? ninety. Man, it's crazy that all those old guys that like all drank scotch and smoked cigars live so long. He was James Bond like fifty years ago, sixty years ago. Yeah. He uh, wow. He got, he was born in 1930 in Edinburgh. Yeah. Yeah. He was 90. He was 90. <laughs> Holy shit. Show. Yeah. He was that's married. A good run for Sean Connery. Yeah. I mean, for the lifestyle he was living, that's a great run. Sir Thomas Sean Connery. Oh, yeah. He was knighted. Yeah. He was, <laughs> he was knighted. <laughs> or as you like to say, he was whited. <laughs> he was whited. <laughs> <laughs> shout out yeah man so i mean he was married since 75 you know that's a good run for a marriage yeah 45 years so he locked he, it down at 45 no he well he was he was married one time and got divorced and then he got married again and then okay. they were married for 45 years you're the one that said you're not ever trying to get married right or you're not trying to have kids no kids i might get married but if you got married and she wanted kids what would happen we can't get married if you want kids. That's part of the deal. <laughs> don't marry me because if you want kids, don't marry me because it's not going to happen. Do you think that's ever going to change? I don't know. What oh, Man, that's interesting. I've never met someone so vehemently, adamantly against children. A lot of comics are like, I'm not having kids. But then a lot of the comics have kids when they're like 50. So Yeah, like, that's the thing. I got I like 15 years to figure it out. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm 30 now, so maybe around like 45. Yeah. I can be like, ah, let me see about having some kids. I don't know. Right I, right now, I'm all set. Until I run out of material. And I'm, like, I'm, not a, I'm not a person that you should want to have kids with right now. 
If a woman wants to have kids with me, something's wrong with her. She's not thinking this through. The fuck is wrong with you? Why would you want kids with me? Why do you yeah. say, man, who knows? You might make a good father at some point. Maybe eventually. I, I don't even make a good boyfriend right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there, right. Maybe there's a difference. Who knows? I think... I think like the, the good boyfriend part, that's all like relative, right? Like I think if you find like the right girl in the relationship, just kind of, it doesn't feel like you're being a boyfriend. It doesn't feel like the relationship is yeah. like taking that. Obviously it's still going to be work and there's going to be up and downs, but it's not like you're struggling to try to be like a boyfriend. It's just like, you're just being you who happens to be in a relationship. Mm. But the fuck do i know i haven't been in a serious relationship since 2016 so <laughs> shout out to being single single uh 2021 yeah shout out to all the exes julia one julia two it's been <laughs> real oh yeah there were julias they were eastern european you know oh hell yeah yeah you know <laughs> eyes and wise and shit and your boy was international dog <laughs> <laughs> intercontinental bambo that's right yeah you know like uh i ain't no lab i ain't no lab local ass <laughs> bitch that ain't me dog i'm fucking i'm global son <laughs> yeah anywho finna wrap this up dog yeah we make like a condom and wrap it up go to teespring.com slash lonely mans t-e-e spring.com slash lonely mans for hoodies t-shirts Earth that <laughs> best Christmas gifts ever at Lonely Man. Or just treat yourself. That's that's a good point. Why yeah. shouldn't you be rocking this merch too? Get, it's hoodie season, baby. Get a pink hoodie, get a white hoodie, get a gray hoodie. Get all yeah. three. Collect them all. Yeah, the Lonely Man's collection. You're gonna see your boy Ben Burr walking nothing but Lonely Man <laughs> soon enough. I'm coming in hot. It's gonna be I hope the printing comes out good. I hope it's high quality. So yeah, I, I mean, well, I'm gonna be advertising them, you know, with that face. Ah. <laughs> Lonely <laughs> man. Yeah, man. So going into the final week of the final week of monk, I don't know what we're calling it now. Monktober's over. I'm about to start. Uh, no, no sex burr. No sex man. I, until the tenth, and I'm about to start November, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going in. I, so, I said I might go 90 days, but I haven't made that uh, concrete yet. Listen, man, you're a much better man than me. And I decided earlier today, like, why didn't I just do the 30 days? But no, this has been good. Yeah. I think I think I've had a lot of time to. To think. <laughs> yeah, when I'm not sitting there watching porn all the time, I do a lot of thinking. But mm -hmm. yeah, man, this has been good. I've learned a lot about myself in this time. Yeah, I didn't waste kind of, any time swiping on fucking tinder for like an hour yeah no no time on or tinder i've just scrolling through instagram i'm definitely keeping social media off my phone i'll check it on the computer once in a while see what's popping but i might i might jump back on the tinder just to see what's popping but it won't be the yeah. same i feel like i'm just kind of over it as well yeah but um i don't know i spend a lot of time playing brain games on my phone like word puzzle games and stuff yeah so I don't know if that's a bad thing. I guess it like makes you better at such and stuff, right? Or nah, is that all bullshit? Uh, I don't know. You might be a little sharper. Yeah, being more verbally impressive or something yeah, along those your lines. Your verbal dexterity is that's right. You know. <laughs> I'm about to be ambidextrous with my swiping <laughs> skills, dog. <Yeah. laughs> I, I dig it, bro. You know, I might be more verbose. Mm. Maybe even in public, I might be more bodacious. My vocabulary <laughs> might be more loquacious. I don't know, Jesse. All I'm saying is I'm feeling it. Ben Bodacious. <laughs> ben Bodacious, that's right. Man, it's about to be Ben Bo busting nuts. <laughs> <laughs> nah, November is coming in real, real tough, though. Catch me on the 10th, all you lonely ladies out there. Catch me on November 10th. Shout out your boy, Ben Bo. Holler at us, baby. Yeah, but I think I, was, I, I do think I am keeping a, the no porn thing going, though. I do think the no porn thing is cool. I'm it's, with it's it. It's junk food for the brain. Yeah, I can't be, I can't be having that. And the, the, I'm, I think I'm going to cut out a lot of the sugar, too. At some point, though, I am going to get a pint of ice cream. I don't know if I can handle it, though. That's the thing. I'm scared. Yeah. 
If I eat one pint of ice cream, bro, I might be just be like, oh. I feel like I'm gonna throw up with all that candy that I ate earlier. You <laughs> ate that much candy, dog? I ate a lot of candy. Yeah. Nice. I respect it. I'm actually going to a. I gotta go pick up my curtains, but after that, I'm gonna stop by the sieves and grab it's, some candy. Still hit my kettlebell, try to work that sugar out of my system. Man, that's the key, though. Going through all that and still keeping it going. Yep. That's the thing. So yeah, we'll stay consistent. Yeah, that's the thing, bro. Just keep moving forward. Doesn't matter what happens. Just if you fuck up today, you try again tomorrow and you just keep it going. That's what we've learned through all this, bro. Just keeping it going. Hell yeah. Let's end on that note, baby. Let's do it. It's been real. Peace. Uh, Peace, lonely fans.